and welcome back to my thriving kitchen. Um, I am actually making uh, shepherd's pie tonight for dinner. I love this. this. The first time I tried it was about a month ago and um, I was amazed. I had never made shepherd's pie before and this recipe is so easy. Uh, I pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes just because I think it just that oven cooking gives it something but it's totally not a requirement because it can be completely done without the oven because everything's already cooked and ready to go but what I have going on here I have my um, I have about five cups of water uh, back in the back pot here and it's about to come to a boil I also added a couple tablespoons of butter and some Thrive uh, Chef's Choice seasoning blend just to give it a little bit of seasoning probably about a teaspoon is what I added and that's just to give it a little bit of flavor, but again, not a necessary addition, just something I chose to add. This is not my recipe. This recipe came from another consultant, and I just tried it last month, thought it was amazing, and it is now going to be in our monthly meal rotation. Here I have a little bit of uh, olive oil and a little bit of butter coming up to warm, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get my garlic in. And I'm going to do this as much as possible with the baby in my arms because <laughs> he wants to be held right now. So, um, so I have I just had one large clove of garlic that I'm mincing into the into the uh, well I guess I'm crushing it into the pan here so that can get sauteed just a little bit. I always want to be careful with the garlic so you don't burn it. I have burned my garlic many a times and it's just not. It's just gross. I'm going to stick those in the sink. And I'm going to stir this around just a little bit. Cook that garlic a little bit up here. I always time this wrong. I try not to have too much dead time. But I guess it's not the worst thing in the world because I can tell you a little bit about um, some of the products I'm using. Uh, I love Thread Life. And obviously, I share it a lot, and I'm very passionate about it. Uh, I started out just because I liked the idea of having a long shelf life on these products, but the more I started using them in my daily life, I started seeing that they were saving me time, and um, that's really valuable when you have little ones like this. Um, having a lot of cook time in the kitchen, though I would love to make hugely gourmet-type meals, I just don't have that kind of time. So, okay, this is a... You know, I think I've given the garlic a little bit of time there. And I am going to actually add, it, the recipe calls for red wine, um, but I don't have any red wine. So I'm just adding, I'm going to substitute beef broth for the red wine. So I added a half teaspoon of, of um, the vegetarian bo beef bouillon. And that's a uh, half cup of, of water. And then I'm just going to let that kind of cook a little while. While I come over here, my water is now good and boiling for the potatoes. Keep little man away here. And I'm going to be adding about four to four and a half cups of potatoes. Just depends. I want them to be creamier for this recipe. Um, not as thick. And this is a half cup measure. And the reason is because they are easier to spread when they're not quite as thick. And my broth and garlic over here has come to a to a boil, so I'm just gonna let that kind of reduce down a little bit. Alright, I didn't add all my potatoes yet, I was just stirring them a little bit as I went. So this is gonna slow me down a little bit, having a little guy in my arms. But, also a great example of how Thrive helps make it possible to make a good meal, even when you have a little one who wants to be helped. Because I can do a lot of this one-handed. Um, Alright, I don't, and I'm not going to be using a knife or anything, so I don't have to chop any potatoes, or um, everything's been washed and chopped for me already, so just really awesome. Get that stirred in. You see the steam? It's hot. So I might 
throw in just a little bit more potatoes, but not a lot, because again, I want that to be really easy to spread over the top of my, my beef mixture. So, so that was about four and a half to five, I mean four to four and a half cups of potatoes there. And I'm pretty happy with that consistency for spreading purposes. And so that's ready to go. I'm just going to set it on the back burner here so it's out of the way. And that kind of cooked down a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add one and a fourth cup of three thrives of ground hamburger. I love this product. Okay, who am I kidding? I love every product from Thrive. Um, but I never would have imagined. So there's one cup. And a fourth cup here. So there's my ground beef. No thawing, no browning. It's already all done for me. So stick that back over there and get my potatoes out of there. I'm going to give that a quick little stir. And then I'm going to toss in all my vegetables. So this is three-fourths cup of corn. I did pre-measure today. I don't usually when I do my videos, um, but today I kind of wanted, I played with the idea of going live, uh, but just decided I'd just do a YouTube video instead. Um, so that was two tablespoons of uh, dehydrated onions. That's a fourth cup of celery. This is half a cup of green peas. A fourth cup of carrot dices. Give this a quick little stir again. And you want to keep the heat on, up on this a little bit because, uh, you know, you want it to come to a simmer or a boil pretty quickly and continue simmering for a little bit. So you know that your, your um, vegetables and your meat all refresh really nicely. So this calls for now um, a tablespoon and a half of tomato powder. Um, I've mentioned before that I will no longer buy tomato paste because tomato powder just does that for me. It'll also do tomato sauce, um, tomato juice, tomato soup. What a versatile ingredient that one is. And then one and a half tablespoons of the Espanol sauce, which is... Um, the, the savory beef gravy. Another one that I didn't try for a long time and once I tried it there's no going back. It'll make a great um, just a basic beef gravy for mashed potatoes but it's also great for sauces like this. You know I'm creating a gravy or beef type of sauce for for this shepherd pie filling and um, I've, I've tossed it in, you know, it'd be great for beef stew, things like that. So, again, I'm, I just uh, put my heat back up to high so it would come to a boil so I could simmer it for just a few minutes. Um, and now I'm going to add my seasonings. So it also calls for about a third tablespoon. And I'm just going to eyeball this parsley. And I'm just going to do a dash of the Chef's Choice. Mostly because I added that um, that beef broth in the beginning, and the original recipe doesn't call for that because um, it called for red wine, and that of course doesn't really, I'm guessing, doesn't have much of the uh, sodium content. But you know, the, the seasoning does have some sodium salt in it, so I don't want to overpower with salt, and also the broth has salt, so don't want to overpower with salt. So I just did a dash instead of the third tablespoon that it's called for. So that's cooking. And I'm actually going to probably just put it on simmer for about five minutes, let it all come together, and I'll be right back. OK, and I'm back. I had to uh, get my little guy up here on the counter, because if I put him on the floor, he'll fuss. And I can't do this part with only one hand. Fortunately, I can do the rest of it. but. This had been, has been just simmering away, and it's really nice and thickened up now. So I'm going to just take it, I turn the heat off, I'm going to transfer it into this pan. This is hot, no touch. No touch. Hot, hot. Hot, 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 hot. Try and 
get all that goodness out. I just spread it into my pan. I'm using, this is a little bit smaller than a 9 by 13, but not much. Um, but it's definitely bigger by, than an 11 by 7. Um, this recipe is supposed to serve about 8. Depends on how, how much your husband eats or you eat. <laughs> um, my husband eats a lot. So this will actually serve my, my whole family plus my dad and have a little bit left over. So the potatoes that I set aside, and who knows, maybe they're a little too creamy this time. Like I said, this is the second time making it, so we'll see if I want them thicker next time. I know I don't want them as thick as the first time I made it. So sometimes, you know, you do a little bit of trial and error and try and get just the right amount. But I'm just spooning those over the top. I'm spreading it on here. Move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Oven, oven temperature thing. And there's all of our potatoes. Spread those on nice and thick. In fact, my husband actually requested more potatoes this time. Um, he likes potatoes as fillers, you know. So there's our potatoes. And the little guy is hot. Is that hot, baby? <laughs> you bonking. There you go. Mom, over the chicken. And then the last step is to just throw some cheese on top. Oh, no, not in there. Not in there. No, no piece. No, no piece. Funny story about my little man here. Um, I recently bought a selfie stick. I know, I'm so cool and uh, hip. And I wait until they're not even cool and hip anymore until I buy one. But that's kind of how I do things. I'm a late adopter of technology. And um, and uh, I had it, and my husband figured out how to make it work with my phone. We played around with it. I took, like, two pictures. Next day, I was going to take it with us to um, visit family for Thanksgiving. Had it on the table. This little guy climbed up there, grabbed it, and the first thing he did within, like, Literally 10 seconds was he broke the bracket off that holds the phone in. So, <laughs> so much for that. Thank goodness I got it cheap now that they're not cool and hip anymore. So, oops, let's leave that right there. So I topped that with cheese. Probably, what, about a cup to a cup and a half of cheese there. There is Thrive cheese. I just don't have any Thrive cheddar cheese. And then I have a burner to clean before I use it again. But um, that's okay. So oven at 350, like I said, this step is actually very optional. But I like the, you know, just melting the cheese thing. So 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm going to take a, I'll pause you again so I can show you the finished product when it comes out of the oven. Hi, I'm gonna, um, it's, it's, it's dinner time. And we are just, knows that I post these and she loves that I film and she usually wants to be part of it. So, um, what is this? This is shepherd's pie. So this is what I made. This is the finished product coming out of the oven. And I love this dress. <laughs> and she loves her dress. So we're going to get to eating in just a couple minutes. I'm going to dish up the kids so it cools off a little bit and then we're going to have... My bowl. <laughs> That's her bowl, her her print her let it go bowl, her frozen and bowl. This is bowl. And that's his bowl. So we're gonna get some eating going on and um, happy thriving. Happy thriving, Pinky.